Hello YouTube, it's your boy Afro Ade coming back at you again. How's everything going? I hope you guys are fine, especially with this pandemic still going on. Uh, with that said, in this episode, we're going to talk about the a, a certain group of people who are probably not heard about, but deserve a lot of attention. And these people are located in modern day uh, Uganda. So let's go ahead and talk about them. Okay, we're going to talk about the Bonyoro people today. So the Bonyoro is a Bantu kingdom in, uh, or was a Bantu kingdom in Western Uganda. And it was one of the most powerful kingdoms in Central and East Africa for about the 13th century to the 19th century. And it was ruled by King Omukama of uh, Bonyoro Kitara. The current ruler is Solomon Igura I. So, and uh, essentially uh, he's the 27th Omukama. So like the 27th king of the nation. The people of Banyoro are also known as Inyoro, Anyoro, or Banyoro. And if I pronounce any of those incorrectly, please forgive me. But those words roughly translate to people of Banyoro. And the language that they speak is actually Inyoro, which is one of the names that they're actually known by. And I'm also, they're also, uh, their language is also known as Ranyoro as well. And in the past, the traditional economy revolved around big game hunting of elephants and lions and leopards and crocodiles, which is important because a long time ago, before people started to settle down, you had a lot of big game hunting before people became agriculturalists. Um, today, the Banyoro are now agriculturalists, though, who cultivate bananas, millet, cassava, yams, cotton, tobacco, coffee, and rice. The people are primarily Christian. Um, and... Of to further like um, dive in deeper even more, the Kingdom of Bayura was established in the 1314 uh, century by Rufidi Mpunga. So like I said, like around like 13, 14th century, the kingdom was established and after the disintegration of the Chwezui Empire of Empire of Kitara, the founder of Bayura was known as Babito. So the Empire of Kitara was an empire before Bayura, but a people who essentially ex um, succeeded the Ben Chwezui were the founders of Bonyoro, who were known at the time as Babito. Okay, so um, essentially, let's talk a little bit about the the Bonyoro Kingdom. Now, at its height, the Bonyoro Kingdom controlled the Great Lakes region of Africa, one of the many small states in the region. The earliest stories of the kingdom have great power come from Uganda and Rwanda. The power of Bonyoro faded by the end of the 16th century, unfortunately, though, with the invasion of Rukidi Mpunga from the north following the death of the beloved king Kao Bihoga. There was a prophecy that when the beloved Kao Bihoga died, this would mark the beginning and the end of the Chwezi Empire. Many of the Chwezi uh, descendants um, who governed this empire moved south to present to present day uh, Uganda and Rwanda, which is how like the empire of Bonyoro uh, or that region ended up becoming uh, an empire in many ways. So later, new kingdoms arose in the Great Lakes areas, such as the Ankole, Buganda, uh, Tora, Busanga, and Bukisa in present-day Kenya and Uganda. So Rwanda, Urundi, and Bonyoro and Karagwe. So all these kingdoms later came after, essentially, um, after the Shreji descendants who governed the empire. Okay. And they founded a new um, empire. So the kingship of uh, the Bonyoro, well, essentially let's talk about their like rise to power a little bit and their rise to uh, power and up seeing them control a number of holiest shrines in the region, as well as the lucrative Kiboro salt works of Lake Albert, Africa. And having the highest quality of melody in the region, which is like very good. You know, a lot of places in Africa, if you guys don't know, went straight from like skip the bronze age and went straight to the iron age so like the f and a lot of african regions were known for being very good at metallurgy so like that's honestly very important to know and in this region it um it was made stronger uh with military and economic power in the great lakes region which allowed the Banyoro people to be even greater at the time the kingship of Banyoro is the most important institution in the kingdom the king is the patrilineal meaning that it is passed down through the male line and this tradition comes from a myth the Nyoro people tell. Once there were three sons of the Mukama, all having the same name. In order to name them, the Mukama asked the god to help him. 
and the boys must go through a series of tasks before being named. The three of them had to sit all night holding a pot of milk. Milk is sacred is a sacred drink and essentially is used for important events. Okay, milk is important to a lot of like places in Africa. As you can see, like they use that a lot in like their diet and a lot of ceremonies. So whoever had all their milk still in the pot by morning would be king. So the youngest son dropped the milk and begged his older brother to give them some of theirs. They did. When morning came, the oldest son dropped a little more. When God and Mukama came to observe the pots, the eldest son was named after the peasants who are not fit for cattle herding since he had no milk left. The middle son was named after the cattle herders and the youngest son was named Mukama and later Mukama or king for having the most. This myth shows the ways in which the Nyoro infuses religion and kingship together. Okay, so like they're, uh, that's how they, uh, they, they meld their things together. Now, let's talk a little bit about the decline. So, the Mayoro people began to decline in the late 8th century due to the internal divisions, and Buganda seized the Kuki and Budi regions from Bonyoro at the end of the century. In the 1830s, the largest province of Toro separated, claiming much of the lucrative salt works. To the south, Rwanda and Ankole were both growing rapidly, taking over some of the smaller kingdoms that had been Bonyoro's vassals. Thus, by the mid-19th century, Bonyoro, also named Onyoro at the time, was a far smaller state. Though it was still wealthy due to the income generated from controlling the lucrative trade routes over the Lake Victoria and linking to the coast of the Indian Ocean, in particular, Bonyoro benefited from the trade in ivory, which ivory, we always hear about it, and we always know that in the past and up to now, ivory is what was always very valuable. So due to the volatile nature of the ivory trade, an armed struggle developed between the Buganda and Bonyoro. As a result, the capital was moved from Masindi to the less vulnerable Mpato. Following the death of the uh, Omakuma Kiembe III, the region experienced a period of political instability where two kings ruled in a volatile political environment. In July 1890, an agreement was settled whereby the entire region north of Lake Victoria, okay, so the entire region north of Lake Victoria was given to Great Britain. Okay, so like, I didn't want to be all colonialist either, but I figured that like, um, when I mentioned how, since we're talking about colonialism now, in the beginning when I did mention that they're Christian, I did want to say something smart, like, oh, like, that's only because they were colonized too, we already know that. But since we're talking about it, then I guess I might as well bring it up. But yeah, I guess that's the reason why they're Christian, because obviously like they, they dealt with the British, but um, all the region of North of Lake Victoria was given to Great Britain, which sucks. And the reason why I brought up everything I literally just said, it sucks because they would eventually go after Uganda next. So in 1894, Great Britain declared the region its protectorate, like I just said, in alliance with Buganda. King Omukama, uh, Kabela, and Bonyoro resisted the efforts to Great Britain, aiming to control the kingdom. However, in 1899, Omukama Kabela was captured and exiled to Seychelles and Bonyoro was subsequently annexed to the British Empire because of the Bonyoro's resistance to the British. A portion of the Bonyoro's kingdom's territory was given to Buganda and Toro. The country was put under the governance of Buganda administrators. The Bonyoro revolted in 1907. The revolt was put down and relations improved somewhat. After the region remained loyal to Great Britain in World War I, a new agreement was made in 1934 giving the region more autonomy. Bonyoro remains as one of the five constituent kingdoms of Uganda. Along the Buganda, Busanga, Renzuru, and Toro. Yeah, so those are like some of the ethnic groups that currently reside in Uganda. Okay, so Bonyoro, if you want to like know where their uh, people are located, then like the Bonyoro people are essentially located in Central East Africa. And, um, essentially, I guess what most people want to do, they want to find out specifically, like, where they're located. And I looked at a map, and if you want to know exactly, like, where they are, then the Bonyoro people are located in central western uh, Uganda. That's where their territories are. They can encompass about three states. Okay, so... And I guess some trickles of them are also in like smaller pockets and other places as well. But it's predominantly in the, in the western central region by Lake Albert, as mentioned before. Okay, so 
essentially uh thank you for listening to um this video of mine guys this is a very interesting people to learn about because just to top it off to give you guys a, a fact that you would probably love to hear is the Banyoro people are very important because something that's very good to note about them is that they were some of the first people to actually perform c-section like perfectly and continuously they kept on doing it for a long period of time it was a procedure that they perfected and that even a, a european i forgot his name even he went to observe it and saw how well they did it how perfectly it was done and a lot of people started to take their ideas and like incorporate them themselves but the Bonioro have been using this technique for years which is something that's very fascinating but other than that tell me what you think about this video in the comments below go ahead and like and subscribe and please, if you want to keep more of these videos coming in quickly and things like that nature, please go ahead and join my Patreon as it'll help me uh, be able to make more videos like this and create more content. I'm just looking for your support and you can give as much as only $1, which is really not even that serious. It's literally just $1 out of um, one month. If I have like maybe like, let's say like 100 out of my, all my like subscribers give me $1 a month, that's basically $100 a month. So your help would literally be useful for me to actually move forward with my videos okay i know it's been hard for me to stay consistent and you guys may have noticed that but i am doing my best as life does happen and um i'm just looking for your help too i want to make content for you guys just because i feel like a lot of this content should be heard but i can only do that also with your help as well so if you could join my patreon and at least um join my patreon for one dollar a month that'd be great and just understand that there are also some awards for my other higher pays as well such as going like such as doing a voiceover with me as well so i'll leave the link below and you guys just go ahead and see if you guys want to do it but if not liking my videos giving me feedback um tell me what you think about it and just subscribing is enough for me all right Thank you so much and everybody have a great day.